What are common problems after spinal fusion surgery? Spinal fusion surgery is a form of traditional scoliosis treatment, and the goal of fusion surgery is to stop progression of scoliosis. And it normally involves fusing the most tilted vertebra on the top of the scoliosis to the, to, to the most tilted vertebra in the bottom of the scoliosis and fusing everything in between. Now, if you have one curve, it could be just one area, but if you have two curves, it could be in the top version of the top curve to the very bottom version of the bottom curve, so it can be many vertebras. And there's many, many different types of spinal fusion, but it normally involves using rods and screws that attach to the spine to hold the spine in place, while, the, while they use bone grafts to actually, for the spine to take in place, to actually fuse the spine together with just bone grafts. But something needs to hold it while the bone grafts are taking place and actually healing. So what are the risks associated with this type of procedure? Well, any type of, any type of surgery that involves screws and rods into the spine and they're removing bone and discs and they're using bone grafts in place of that, there is, it's a high risk procedure. And in fact, because of the risk associated with spinal fusion, they normally have to wait for curves to become severe enough to warrant the treatment. Meaning if spinal surgery or spinal fusion had no risk associated with it, I meaning it was a very low procedure, they would do fusion on very small curves, you know, 10, 20 degrees. But the reason why they, uh, the curve, the reason why they don't is because the surgery itself holds such risks associated with it, they have to wait for the curve to become severe enough to say, okay, now the curve is severe enough for us to attempt to do spinal fusion. The, what, but some risk can definitely be related is nerve damage is probably one of the most severe things that can occur because when they're putting screws around the spine and around the spinal cord and around these nerves, the, the spine and screws can now damage or affect the nerves in a negative way. And when you affect nerves, you affect whatever those nerves are controlling. And that can be relatively excessive in terms of what it could affect. It can cause leg issues, it can cause paralysis, it can cause malfunction, it can cause weakness, different things, anything that the nerves controlling it can affect. It can lead to excessive blood loss, and that can lead to a state of anemia, which can cause different problems within the body. Um, infection is something also that's very, uh, very concerning is if there is an infection where the screws or where the hardware, spinal infections don't heal very well, especially as patients get older because they're not very, not very vascular and the infection can lead to joint damage and joint issues that can be very difficult to deal with and very difficult to treat. Last thing is an adverse reaction or some type of allergic reaction to the hardware itself, meaning that when you put this hardware in, this metal in, the body could respond to it into a foreign object, and you can have an immune reaction that can lead to very serious consequences where the hardware will actually have to be removed. So therefore, there's a lot of immediate things that can occur, but one of the biggest things is what are the long-term effects of spinal fusion surgery and what could this lead to? Well, it's very case-specific, but unfortunately, there's a huge lack of data and research on long-term effects of scoliosis surgery, 20, 30, 40 post 30 years post-surgical fusion. We have really no idea of how these people do compared to patients who don't have surgery. And we really don't know how these people do to non-surgical patients and how they do if they would have just left their scoliosis the way they way it was and dealt with the effect of their scoliosis. We have no way of knowing this. And because of this long-term data, this long-term uh, lack of information, patients are very weary about, hey, uh, what's gonna happen? How long the hardware actually survives in the body or hardware longevity is unknown. We don't know that, but it is, it makes sense that hardware does have a limited length of, of use in the body and the body is gonna have some reaction to it. So there's more than likely gonna to have to be multiple surgeries if you have one. It, I, it's not likely to think that one surgery you have at 12 or 13 or 14 years old is gonna last you 60 years. More than likely there's gonna be multiple surgeries, but we, we really don't know. Nobody's ever studied it or un, understood the complexity of, on it. One thing that we know, it definitely expect, affects spinal flexibility in the fused area. When every area is fused, will no longer move under normal motion, meaning normal range of motion will be decreased at the area of fusion because fusion by definition is a non-functional approach. The spine is designed to move. If you eliminate the movement, you're eliminating part of its function. It's kind of getting like getting your arm 
and saying you have an arm problem or specifically an elbow problem and saying, okay, I'm gonna fuse it completely straight with rods and screws, make your arm completely straight and now say you have a healthy arm. Well, your arm is straighter, it's fused straighter, but it can no longer move or bend. So you're giving up function for alignment, meaning being completely straight. And that's what spinal fusion is for scoliosis. You're giving up function for alignment but unfortunately your spine won't be perfectly straight or just be reduced. Um, so pain at the site of fusion is also very common, can happen because due to the rigidity, what tends to happen is what's ever right above or right below the fusion can go through an accelerated degeneration process and that can cause damage to that area below. Now, if that happens, there's only one treatment option that's normally recommended and that's to extend your fusion even further than it was before. Um, also, a fused spine, unfortunately, is more prone to injury because it can't absorb forces better. So if you have a serious impact or injury, there's chances that the hardware could come out of the spine or the bone fusion that took place could actually break. And that can lead to more very, very complicated things to deal with. And therefore, you know, if we could avoid that, that would be also be favorable. And the last thing I'll talk about, about, talk about is the psychological effects. There is a psychological effect to having something inside your body that you know isn't, isn't you, isn't, and the fear of what could happen if you try something new and you maybe have an injury, what could that lead to? That it does affect people psychologically long-term. So we do, since we don't know the long-term effects, many patients are, think, are looking for an alternative to spinal fusion. Fusion. And the question is, is there one? And we say, yes, there is a conserva conservative non-surgical approach to scoliosis. And I like to call this a functional approach to scoliosis or a chiropractic centered approach to scoliosis. And the reason why I call it a functional approach is because the goal is to reserve or preserve spinal function as much as possible while improving alignment. Spinal fusion is throwing function out the window and saying, we just want alignment. Well, in the conservative or chiropractic center approach, we want to get the best of both worlds. We want to actually reduce the curve and retain function. And the goal is to reduce the curve. And normally this is done by integrating multiple forms of treatment into a comprehensive scoliosis approach that's going to actually reduce the curve while maintaining function. So what types of conservative treatments that do we use? Well, first thing is that the, all treatments are condition person specific, meaning what I'm mentioning here is maybe just a general idea of what would happen with a patient, but every, in order for scoliosis care to be successful, the patient has to be evaluated for their curve type, the curve severity, the type of scoliosis they have, and the treatment program needs to be customized for their specific scoliosis presentation, meaning an S-curve or a thoracic curve and a lumbar curve and a thoracolumbar curve and an adolescent scoliosis and a juvenile scoliosis and adult scoliosis, they're all gonna get different types of treatment, meaning that the, even though the sequencing may be similar, it won't be exact. First thing is that we have a chiropractic approach, meaning that our goal is to try to reduce the curve while retaining function. And chiropractic care tends to be the, the, the foundation of what we're using, but we're not limited to just classic chiropractic care, meaning doing chiropractic spinal adjustments. We use chiropractic care in, in coordination with specific office therapy. And the office therapy is scoliosis specific, meaning we're not just trying to get somebody's back stronger by using general physical therapy or core exercises or low back strengthening. We use a combination of passive therapies and active therapies to either passively push the scoliosis into a straighter position or actively strengthen the body into a corrective position. And the, normally the sequence is done in something that we call low, high dose, short duration treatment, as opposed to low dose, long duration treatment. Traditional therapy is very long and very slow, and they do it over a very, very long period of time because you're helping rehabilitate somebody from an injury. A high dose, short duration treatment, which is what scoliosis treatment is, is very short and very intense because we're trying to reduce the size of the curve in a very short time. After this home therapy is done, and the, I'm sorry, after this office therapy is done and the corrective chiropractic care is done, normally we're normally figuring out in this stage exactly what type of home therapy they'll do in order to sustain the reductions achieved. So normally we're prescribing very specific scoliosis home therapy. And then last thing is we can also use something called corrective bracing. Now, corrective bracing is very different than traditional bracing because traditional bracing, the goal is just trying to slow progression down during adolescent growth spurts. Traditional bracing is used in no other time and it's only used for moderate 
co curves between 25 and 30 degrees. Corrective bracing is the exact opposite of that. We're not just trying to slow progression down, but we're trying to add to what we did in the office therapy, the home therapy, and the corrective chiropractic care to help reduce the scoliosis and push the spine into a straighter position. So corrective bracing pushes the spine into a straighter position, not just squeezes it and tries to hold it. Since corrective bracing is a corrective tool, we can use it in any size curve and any age of patient because our goal is to get as much reduction as possible. The benefits of conservative treatment is number one is that we can be proactive. We can definitely be proactive in treating curves at a much smaller stage. We don't have to wait for curves to become severe enough to consider our treatment option because our treatment option is very less, it's non-invasive. It doesn't provide very risky treatment. It doesn't provide a high risk associated with the treatment. So therefore we can do it on small curves because the chance of something negative happening as a result of our conservative treatment is very, very low. Two is that it preserves spinal function. And since it preserves sp spinal, spinal function, the body can still move and function. And you don't have to worry about the risk associated with the lack of movement or lack of function of the spine. Like I mentioned, every treatment method, every treatment model is uniquely customized for the patient. And since it's uniquely customized for the patient, it impacts the scoliosis on a structural level. It's not just dealing with the symptoms associated with scoliosis, it's dealing with it on a structural level to actually reduce the size of curve, which can most importantly affect what the scoliosis and what the impact has on the human body. It can increase core, st core strength and spinal stability because as we make the spine straighter, the muscles can now be stronger in a more aligned position than just stronger in a more and still the same abnormal alignment. And since we're combining multiple forms of treatment, we can be very dynamic in what a patient needs in order to get better, meaning if a patient can't tolerate a certain form of rehabilitation or therapy, we can use other ones because we're combining many forms of treatment for them to complement each other. And the last thing I'll mention is coordination. When I find patients that are looking for conservative treatment, their care is very uncoordinated or very fragmented, meaning they're seeing a physical therapist over here, maybe they're seeing a chiropractor over here, maybe they're seeing an orthotist over here, then they're seeing an exercise physiologist over here, and then maybe they're going with to an orthopedist. And all of these therapists and doctors have their own approach, and this approach is very fragmented. And when I see people, go, what they're doing, I see a lot of things that are competing with other other professionals because they're not really comprehensive in understanding, well, this doctor is going to take care of this piece and this doctor is going to take care of this piece. There's a lack of communi communication and coordination. And here at Scoliosis Reduction Center, we actually coordinate everything is coordinated typically by me or the, your lead doctor, and it's being coordinated so every that one doctor is coordinating every piece. We are the therapist, we are the chiropractor, we are the exercise physiologist, we're the home therapist, we're the orthotist. We're managing every piece of it and applying the treatment to you so we know how every form of therapy is reacting with the other form of therapy to provide the very best outcome. So it's this coordination or lack of fragmentation which provides very good results when we're looking at trying to treat or manage a scoliosis non-surgically. So with conservative treatment, you can preserve normal spinal function and you can get treatment that's going to reduce the scoliosis, deal with the impact, and not deal with the risk associated with spinal surgery. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.